Hey, what up America? It's your boy Bouchon Glover, Better Black America TV on YouTube. Now today is Tuesday, November 5th, 2019. Now today, we're going to talk about moving forward, you know, what our, what, you know, what's our plan, you know, as black America, where do we see the future of black America moving forward? Because we always sit back and allow people that's not us that have not walked in the shoes uh, that we've been walking in and, you know, they're framing our future. And we sit back on the sidelines and be spectators and we do not get involved or indulge in the conversation. But moving forward, this is what we're going to have to do. Because I was at, at the barbershop this weekend, you know, might not look like it, you know, but I, I do go to the barbershop and um, my barber, he said, uh, why don't you go ahead and grab that magazine right there? No, the one on the top, I grabbed it and it was the uh, GQ magazine and Pharrell Williams was on the cover of the magazine. I'm like, oh my God. So I'm looking at that magazine cover and I'm like, wait a minute, man, Pharrell, what is he wearing? It looks like, I'm not going to say it looks like, it is a yellow dress. Okay, Pharrell Williams is on the cover of GQ magazine in a dress with rings on, which is okay, hair dyed blonde. And the title of the article or GQ, what GQ is promoting, it says the new masculinity and on the cover of that magazine was Pharrell Williams in a dress. So that's the new masculinity. There's not a such thing as new masculinity. Masculinity is masculinity. And it's time for men to really have this conversation. Now, GQ magazine, you know, I looked up the editor. I looked up who wrote the, the article. You know, and his name is Bill Welch. And I'm sure he's a liberal, white liberal, and more than likely he's gay, just like the editor is gay. But they're, they're trying to destroy the fabric of blackness in this country. Because when I had a conversation with my uncle some time ago, and he was like, nephew, they've been doing that. You know, they had my uncle them back in the 70s, you know, wearing uh, platform shoes and uh, fishnet shirts with their nipples out. And then they wore those those tight, tight pants with the with the whole sack on the side, you know, where, where women could just look and say, oh, he packing or he not. Because the way the pants were made, you had no choice but to show your package. And when you think about it, these are gay designers that's actually making these clothes. So they're not making them for women. They're making them for them to look at you. Just like there's the, 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 the designers of the skinny jeans. I mean, come on, man. These liberal or these gay uh, designers uh, want to look at you, brother. And that's why we don't, you know, it's kind of weird. You know, we was in that baggy stage and now, you know, you got, you got, you know, men sagging or young men sagging and, you know, not wearing boxes, trying to be hard, but they wearing look like they got panties on. We call them dun -dun -duns. you know, showing, you know, uh, the, the whole booty, which, you know, as men, we're going to really have to be honest and start having these conversations, because I, I, I believe when Hillary Clinton said that they brought us to heal, I believe when she said that, 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 that they really did, because why are we so silent? But we have these conversations off the record. But now it's a time to have no fear because we can actually move forward because we have outlasted, you know, their genocidal movement because now we're starting to push back. Because they really didn't want us to be here, but we are here. But when you put in Pharrell Williams, and I'm sure, you know, for his career, he's, he deals with a lot of liberals, a lot of gay men. Of, uh, 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 and he wants to be successful. When you're in, in that entertainment industry, you know, they can make or they can break you. You know, it's hard for me to watch Empire because, you know, I hate the fact that they show men that look like me kissing other men that look like me. And that's not cool. We have to say something. I know the world is changing. But when you look at white America, you know, you don't see that. You see the flaming white guy, you know, and then his corny white boyfriend, you know, but when you look at the uh, movies when it comes to blacks and then you have the black producers like Lee Daniels, they're really pushing an envelope to b basically change the fabric of what a black man is in America. 
So when I look at this article and it says the new masculinity and like I after mentioned before, it's not a such thing as a new masculinity. Masculinity has always been masculinity. So basically to be not politically correct, basically what they're saying, that cover of GQ magazine, uh, Pharrell Williams is pretty much the old faggot. Okay. Because back in the day, that's what we called him. Oh, that's a fag. That's a faggot. But I know now moving forward, you know, we it's changed and it's have to be politically correct. Because just like back in the day, I was a nigger and they hung niggers on trees and they beat the crap out of niggers. But that hasn't changed. But why are they trying to push an envelope of, of blacks, of black men becoming non-producers of babies? And that's that's one thing that bothers me when it comes to genocide. We all, we're only uh, arguably 10 to 13.5 percent of the population. We're over 40 percent of the uh, prison uh, population and we abort the most babies. Is that not genocide? I mean, think about it. Think about 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. OK, we have to really start preparing for the future. And we have to get out of that post-traumatic slave syndrome because we really don't prepare for the future. That's like with our financials, you know, because I'm basically uh, in a program where we want to assist people with their retirement and things of that nature. So we're going to talk about that down the road. And I probably put that on Facebook or Instagram. Um, but a lot of these things I can't put on Facebook because Facebook, you know, pretty much just like GQ magazine, they're owned and ran by white liberals and they don't want black men to have a voice. And it saddens my heart because it's pretty much about powers and principalities and a spiritual warfare because we really do have to push back because at the end of the day, a gay black man is still a black man. OK, a black feminist is still a feminist because you guys are still, you know, black. OK. Because they keep changing us. We was Negro, you know, uh, we were black and then we became African-American and all of that stuff. So now we really have to brand ourselves. And that's basically black. OK, uh, Negroid, Negro. We got to get back to black because black connects us to every melanated person on this planet. But why do they get the opportunity to continue to rebrand who we are? Uh, we have to start uh, rebranding. We have to start branding ourselves on 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 what we want or how we want to see the future of black America, because families first. You have to understand they took they, they did something to, to systematically to make sure that we didn't have strong families. So therefore, we got to get back to black. We got to get back to families. We got to get back to being a community. We got to get back to fighting for the resources in our communities and to have the same opportunities that other um, communities have because everybody fight for their own rights and their own disposition. And we just saw that with the pride and LBGTQ, the feminist movement and the Jewish community. When are we as blacks are going to take a page out of their handbook and make a decision that we're going to do what we're called to do? And that's basically reshape America. OK, and that's who we are. We, we've outlasted the curse. We've made it. So now it's time to have these conversations and we they branding the masculinity, the new masculinity There's no such a thing. Masculinity is masculinity, just like they say orange is a new black. No, green is a new black. No, black is black and black is back. So we really got to understand that we can't sit back and just allow people who really don't have our best interests at hand to basically frame our future. So therefore, we have to have these conversations because it's time to, you know, to live and it's time to do what's right. OK, it's time to talk about the crime in our communities. It's time to 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 figure out a way to 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 steer our youth away from gangs. And it's time to create opportunities uh, in, when it comes to food and shelter so they can survive. Because once food and shelter is not a big issue, you start to realize in the psychology books to tell you this around 40 ish. You start thinking like, man, what what's what's my purpose? And I had to you know, go through that. And my purpose is just basically to be a truth teller. It's just to tell the, the world of what's going on and it's time to communicate and have that conversation about you know what's going on in america um we can't allow them to basically push us out or try to rebrand us and create this new masculinity you know new masculinity uh gay is not new masculinity 
Just like the, when they were talking about toxic masculinity, those were women that didn't like masculine men, you know, writing articles and having a conversation about just alpha males. We're sorry that you don't like us. You know, we're sorry that you're intimidated by us, but we're really, truly God fearing people. You know, we're protectors. I mean, I, I, I don't know what it's like to walk around around as, you know, a, a inferior gay white guy or an inferior uh, white female. I don't know. I don't really cross the, the street when I see, you know, groups of black men. I walk by and I say, what's happening? Nick? What's up? And keep it pushing. You know, I've never gotten on the elevator and felt like I was about to get robbed, but I've walked on the elevator many and plenty of times and purses was clenched. And I'm sitting back like, well, that, that's wow. OK, and then I say, good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing today with that smile? And they said, oh, oh whew, we're fine. How are you? I'm like, yeah, OK. But it's time. It's time, America. You know, and, I, and I'm calling out Generation X and I'm calling out the baby boomers. But the baby boomers, you know, it, it's, it's really rough because, you know, it's easier to to um, to train children or young men tend to repair broken men. So we got to make sure that you're not broken. If you are broken, we got to pick up the pieces and get you back on track and, and start seeing the future. Uh, OK, and start forecasting and start framing black America the way we uh, have to. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about moving forward our presidential campaigns. We're going to talk about an agenda, an agenda to cut the balls off of black men. Be, why? Because we're the shit and because that's who they want to be. Because you're not going to sit back and poke at somebody if you're superior than them. So if you're secondary or a subordinate, then, you know, your your mission is to, you know, I want to be like him. And since I can't, you know, I'm going to destroy him. So bring it on because black America is 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 there's no stopping it because we are God fearing conservative Christians. We believe in family. We believe in security, safety, health and wealth. So it's time to start working on the, you know, bridging the gap from a wealth perspective. It's time to talk about, you know, uh, being independent from a political perspective, because if we do away with capital gains, if they raise capital gains taxes, if we have Medicare for all and all of that, they're basically keeping us in a pot where we need to be a la carte. When I say a la carte, when you, you know, make gumbo, you get the you know, Alaskan king crab a la carte. OK, then you cut it up and then you throw it in there. You don't mix it all up with everything else is in that pot of gumbo. Just like when you're a choice, a piece of steak, you know, you when you buy Kobe beef, you know, it's basically a la carte. And then you order your side. It's not a entree that just comes with a full meal. That's the only thing that comes with that is chicken and, you know, whatever else you want to put with that. But with that being said, man, today is Tuesday and uh, November 5th. You know, we're closing out this year. We're going to close out strong. And I'm really, you know, wanting to put this content because moving forward, it's really going to get to uh, an entirely another level. Because politically, we're going to we're going to make some noise this political season, because like I said, we're conservative. You know, heterosexual men are conservative. Business owners are conservative. You know, so we have to start pushing back and stop letting the dark side, meaning the side that wants to just eradicate or erase the fabric of that we were ever here. OK, so we got to get it together. And a better black America is going to be one of those platforms that we're going to keep it pushing. But I appreciate you. Subscribe, share. But moving forward, we, it's about to get real thick and we're going to really play our part in basically rebranding black America and, and, and getting what was promised to us. They say it was 40 acres in the mule, but I see a sum of eight million dollars of Friedman's bank money put to the side. And we're looking for that with interest. And with that being said, man, have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to a better black America today. Today is Tuesday, November 5th, 2019. Have a good week. Have a good day. God bless. Peace out.